Hello everyone! Welcome to our next lesson in basic calculus. In today's video, we're going to discuss determining relationship between differentiability and continuity of a function. So let's first discuss the following definitions. Definition 1, continuity at a number. A function f is continuous at a number c if all of the following conditions are satisfied. 1 f of c exists, 2, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists, and 3, f of c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c. If at least one of these conditions is not satisfied, the function is said to be discontinuous at c. Sa class, ito yung na-discuss natin doon sa topic natin on illustrating the continuity of a function. So, mamaya magbibigay tayo ng example pa kung paano natin ito uh, magagamit. Paano natin ma-check itong conditions na ito. Definition 2. Continuity on the set of all real numbers. A function f is said to be continuous everywhere if f is continuous at every real number. And then we have definition 3. A function f is differentiable at the number c if f prime of c is equal to the limit of f of c plus h minus f of c all over h as h approaches 0 exists. So, sa, sa madaling salita class, masasabi lang natin na differentiable yung function f natin at the number c kung nag -e exist yung f prime of c. Okay? Or yung derivative ng function natin at the number c. Start tayo class with example number 1. Discuss the continuity and differentiability of the function f of x is equal to x cubed at x equals 3. So, inahin natin class tingnan yung continuity ng ating function at x is equal to 3. So, again, um, check natin yung tatlong condition. So, yung una muna. Let's check if f of c exists. So, ang function natin na given is f of x is equal to x cubed. At ang ating x ay equal sa 3. So, i-check natin yung f of 3. Kasi ang c natin dito ay 3. So, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng f of 3 is equal to 3 cubed. Kung baga, diba, sinubstitute lang natin yung 3 sa lahat ng x's dun sa ating function. And 3 cubed ay equal sa 27. Kasi, diba, 3 times 3 times 3 equal yun sa 27. Next, condition. So, let's check if the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. So, check natin if the limit of x cubed as x approaches c exists. So, class, we can actually use um, theorem number 2. Dun sa discussion natin on limit theorems, since polynomial ito, at real number yung c. So, pwede natin makuha yung limit nito as x approaches 3. So, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 is actually equal to f of 3. So, in essence, compute lang natin yung f of 3, given this function, x cubed. So, we will have f of 3 is equal to 3 cubed. Ano? And again, ang value, o ang f, ang value, ang resulting value natin dito is 27. So, f of 3 is equal to 27. Hence, the limit of x cubed as x approaches 3 is also equal to 27. Now, Let's check the third condition. So, in the third condition, let's check if f of c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, apparently, kitang-kita naman natin dito na equal yung dalawa. f of 3 is equal to the limit of x cubed as x approaches 3. Therefore, f is continuous at x equals 3. So, class, kung titingnan natin yung sketch ng graph, okay, kung baga parang review na rin dun sa diniscuss natin previously, um, ito yung graph, sketch ng graph nung f of x is equal to x cubed. Yan, so, mag-extend yan doon. Ngayon, yung, at x equals 3, so somewhere in here, makikita natin na walang hole, walang gap, or walang jump. Ibig sabihin, continuous nga yung function natin at x equals 3. Okay. So, check naman natin ngayong class yung differentiability of our function, f of x is equal to x cubed at x equals 3. 
So, dun sa previous video tutorial natin, so diniscuss natin ito, so yung f prime of x sub 0 is just equal to the limit of f of x minus f of x sub 0 all over x minus x sub 0 as x approaches x sub 0. So, ito yung formula natin sa pagkuha ng derivative at a given number. Okay? Yan. So, ang gagawin natin, again, is sa substitute lang natin class, uh, ito, itong value na to na 3, doon sa lahat ng x sub 0 doon sa ating formula. And then, o oh, sige, isa isay natin. So, f prime of x sub 0, so magkakaroon ka na dito ng f prime of 3. So, again, galing ito dito. Next, yung f of x natin, equal lang daw yan sa x cube, galing sa given. So, yung f of x, ginawa na nating x cube. Next, Yung f of x sub 0, ang gagawin lang natin dito, is solve lang natin yung f of 3. Okay? So, solve natin yung f of 3 gamit yung function na to. So, magkakaroon tayo ng um, f of 3 is equal to 3 cube. 3 cube, again, is equal to 27. So, yung f of x sub 0, 27. Okay? All over, yung ating x, kinopya lang dito, and then minus, again, yung x sub 0 natin is 3. And, as x approaches, x sub 0, so again, ang x sub 0 ay 3. So, ito na yung magiging resulting, ano natin, um, a resulting function. Okay? So, compute na natin. Uh, ngayon, class, um, tingnan natin yung numerator and denominator. Actually, kapag kinuha natin yung limit ng numerator as x approaches 3, it will give us 0. Ano? Kasi, diba, 3 cubed, 27, minus 27, 0. And, as well as the denominator, ganun din. Um, limit of x minus 3 as x approaches 3, so, we'll have 3 minus 3 equal yun sa 0. So, uh, with that, actually, ito ay of the form 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng factoring or rationalization. So, dito sa case na to, we can do factoring. Kasi, Obviously, itong x cubed minus 27, we can further factor this out. Pwede natin itong expand. Para hindi mahirapan, class, we can use this binomial algebraic, algebraic identities. So, it's identities yun. Okay? Para hindi tayo mahirapan. x cubed minus 27, ito ay nandito sa ganitong form. Sa form na a cubed minus b cubed. And ako kasi pansin ninyo, x cube, pwede nating uh, nasa gantong form yan sa a cube as well as yung 27 nasa gantong form b cube. Actually, kasi we can write 27 as 3 cube. Right? Okay. Ngayon, uh, para i-expand to, so, uh, gamitin lang natin to as pattern. So, yung a natin in this case ay x. And dito naman sa pangalawa, ang, a, ang b natin dito ay 3. Ano? Kasi nga, pwede mo siyang express as 3 cube. So, kumbaga, x cube minus 3 cube. Okay? So, equal lang daw yun sa x minus 3. So, the quantity of x minus 3 times the quantity of a square naman natin yung x. So, we'll have x squared plus yung product. So, x times 3, we, have, we will have 3x in here. Plus, square, square nung 3. So, we will have 9. So, ang resulting natin, ang result natin will be the quantity of x minus 3 times the quantity of x squared plus 3, x plus 9. Actually, class, kapag minultiply natin to, ito lang din yung lalabas, yung x cubed minus 27. So, you can try that. Ano? Inexpand lang natin. Kinuha lang natin yung factors nito. Yan. So, after doing that, class, mapapansin natin na pwede natin i-cancel out yung x minus 3. Okay, so what will remain is this, the limit of x squared plus 3x plus 9 as x approaches 3. So we can use again the limit theorems, ano? So compute na natin yung f of 3. So we will have 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 9, which is equal to 9 plus 9 plus 9, equal to 27. So hence, f prime of 3 is equal to 27, Okay. Since f prime of 3 exists, then f is differentiable at 
x equals 3. So, pansin natin, nag-exist yung f prime of 3, actually equal daw yun sa 27. Ibig sabihin lang, yung f natin ay differentiable at x equals 3. In the relationship of differentiability and continuity of functions, if a function is differentiable at x equals c, then it is continuous at x equals c. So, differentiability implies continuity. So, actually, class, kapag napakita natin na yung function natin ay differentiable at x equals c, automatic, pwede na nating masabi na yung function na yun is continuous at x equals c as well. So, with that, differentiability again implies continuity. Let's proceed to the next example class. Example number 2. Discuss the continuity and differentiability of the function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2 at x is equal to 2. So, una natin i-check class yung continu continuity nitong function f natin at x is equal to 2. So, again, we're going to check three conditions. So, una muna. Let's check if f of c exists. So, again, ang function natin is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. At ang c natin dito ay 2. So, i-compute natin yung f of 2. So, we will have f of 2 is equal to the absolute value of 2 minus 2. So, yung 2, sinabstitute lang natin sa lahat ng excess dito sa ating function. So, we will have uh, the absolute value of 2 minus 2. So, yung 2 minus 2 equal to 0. And the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0. So, hence, uh, f of 2 exists. Actually, it is equal to 0. Next um, condition. Let's check if the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. So, makikita natin, class, that the limit of the absolute value of x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 0 as well. Ano kasi, diba? 2 minus 2, 0. Absolute value of 0 is equal to 0. Third condition, let's check if f of c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, apparently, kita naman natin, class, na equal yung dalawa. So, f of 2 is equal to the limit of the absolute value of x minus 2 as x approaches 2. Therefore, f is continuous at x is equal to 2. Since na-satisfy yung tatlong conditions. Ngayon class, if we're going to examine the sketch of the graph of this function, itong f of x is equal to the, the absolute value of x minus 2. So, ito yung sketch ng graph niyan. Tingnan natin at x is equal to 2. So, ito yan. Makikita natin na at this point, wala ring hole, wala ring gap, or walang jump dun sa sketch ng graph. Hence, indeed, uh, yung ating function ay continuous at x equals 2. I-check naman natin ngayon, class, yung differentiability of the given function at x equals 2. So, again, ito yung gagamitin natin. So, f prime of x sub 0 is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of x sub 0 all over x minus x sub 0 as x approaches x sub 0. Ngayon, class, i-check natin yung one-sided derivative. So, una nating kukunin ay yung f prime of 2 from the left. Okay? So, equal ito sa limit of... The absolute value of x minus 2 minus 0 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. Sa isa natin. Class, yung f of x, base sa given, again, equal yan dito sa absolute value of x minus 2. So, yung f of x na yan, pinalta na natin ito. And then, ang ating x sub 0 ay 2. So, yung x sub 0, pinalta na natin dito ng 2. Pati dito, pinalta na natin ng 2. Para ma-compute natin yung f of x sub 0, isa-substitute lang natin yung 2 dito sa ating given function. So, we will get uh, f of 2. So, f of 2 is equal to the absolute value of 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 ay 0. Absolute value of 0 is equal to 0. Hence, yung f of x sub 0 natin dito, equal lang yan sa 0. Okay? Ayan. So, all over, again, x kinopia lang minus yung x sub 0 again natin ay 2. As x approaches 2 from the left. Okay? Ayan. 
So, simplifying this, so kahit hindi na natin isulat yung minus 0 doon, ngayon class, sige, um, saan kaya equal tong absolute value of x minus 2? Kung natatandaan natin, class, we have this uh, definition of absolute value. Uh, absolute value of x is equal to first negative x if x is less than 0, equal naman daw yan sa x if x is greater than or equal to 0. Ngayon, dito sa unang case natin, again, ang consider natin yung x values from the left of 2. Meaning, pwedeng uh, nasa kaliwa ng 2 sa number line. So, pwedeng 1, negative 1, uh, 0, ba? So, sige, try natin dito. Let's say 1, diba? So, 1 minus 2, negative. So, it will give you a negative number. Or, sige, pwedeng negative 3. Nasa kaliwa yun ng 2. So, negative 3 minus 2, negative 5. Okay, so again, negative yung result. Ngayon, class, it will fall in this case. Okay? If x is less than 0. Ngayon, uh, ito, the absolute value natin ng x ay equal sa negative x if x is less than to 0. Since magiging negative yung ito, ito nasa loob, ibig sabihin, equal lang yan sa negative quantity of x minus 2. Okay? All over, kinopya lang ulit yung x minus 2. Kasi diba, sige, come to think of it. Let's say, um, 1. Nasa kaliwa ang 1 ng 2. Right? So, 1 minus 2, negative 1. Alam natin na kapag kumukuha tayo ng absolute value, ang makukuha natin ay positive value. So, kung negative 1 yan, kukunin mo yung negation ng negative 1 para maging positive. So, posit up. Uh, so, negative of negative 1 para maging positive 1. Parang ganun din dito. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng negative sign sa labas. Okay? Following this definition din ng absolute value. Okay? Next. So, ito, um, the limit of negative quantity of x minus 2 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. So, ito, equal lang to sa negative quantity of x minus 2 over x minus 2, equal lang yan sa negative 1. Okay? And the limit of negative 1 as x approaches 2 from the left, basically, ay equal lang sa negative 1. Diba? Base din sa limit theorem natin. The limit of a co the constant as x approaches c is equal to the constant itself. So, f prime of 2 from the left is equal to negative 1. Okay, proceed naman tayo dun sa isa pa class. So, kunin naman natin yung f prime of 2 from the right. So, equal lang ito sa so limit of the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 0 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay, so basically, pareho lang nung kanina. Ano? Ang nakaiba lang, ang kukunin natin dito yung limit nitong function as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay. So, again, kahit hindi na natin isulat dito yung minus 0. Yan. Ngayon, class, since ang consider natin dito ay yung x values from the right of 2, sa example nun, 3, 2.5, 2.1, basta nasa kanan ng 2 sa number line, positive pa rin yung magiging a difference dito sa loob ng absolute value. So, x natin dito ay, ay greater pa rin sa zero. Ano? So, hence, still, hindi magbabago yung sign nito. So, equal lang ito sa limit of x minus 2 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay? Ngayon, uh, pag divide natin ito, equal lang yan sa 1. So, the limit of 1 as x approaches 2 from the right is equal to 1. Ano? So, f prime of 2 from the right is equal to 1. So, makikita natin magkaiba. Yung nakuha natin na one-sided derivative. Yung f prime of 2 from the left equals a negative 1, while f prime of 2 from the right is equal to 1. Since the one-sided derivatives, f prime of 2 from the left and f prime of 2 from the right are not equal, f prime of 2 does not exist. That is, f is not differentiable at x equals 2. 
In the relationship of differentiability and continuity of functions, it is possible for a function to be continuous at x equals c and not be differentiable at x equals c. So, continuity does not imply differentiability. Kagaya nung example natin. Ay, nakita natin na yung function natin ay continuous at x equals c. But, kahit continuous yun at x equals c, it does not necessarily mean that it will be differentiable at x equals c. So, again, continuity does not imply differentiability. Okay, hindi automatic na kahit nakita natin, na-solve natin, na yung function natin na continuous at x equals c, hindi nangangahulugan na differentiable din yun at x equals c. So, kailangan natin i-solve, i-check. Okay? So, let's proceed to the third example. Discuss the continuity and the differentiability of the following function at x equals 1. So, we have here a piecewise function naman. So, f of x is equal to 5x if x is less than 1. f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So, i-check muna natin class yung continuity netong ating piecewise function. So, check natin muna if f of z exists. So, ang si natin 1. So, we'll, we're going to check f of 1. And we're going to use this sub-function. Kasi yung x equals 1, dito siya magpo-fall. If x is greater than or equal to 1. So, ang gagamitin natin sub-function ay f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. So, isolve natin class yung f of 1. So, f of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 3 equal lang ito sa 5. Hence, um, f of 1 exists actually equal ito sa 5. Second condition, let's check if the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. So, check natin yung left, uh, yung one-sided limits muna. So, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left, so, ang i-consider natin dito ay yung unang sub-function. Kasi, di ba, ang condition dun sa unang sub-function, f of x is equal to 5x if x is less than 1. Less than 1. So, ito yung gagamitin natin. So, we have f of x is equal to 5x. So, gamitin uli natin yung lim uh, theorem number 2 dun sa ating limit theorems. So, limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is equal to f of 1. So, basically, kunin lang natin yung f of 1 nito. So, f of 1 is equal to 5 times 1. f of 1 is equal to 5. Hence, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 5. Okay? Next naman, dun naman sa from the right. Let's now compute for the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right. So, again, sa kanan ng 1, papalapit sa kanya. Okay? From the right. So, ay ko consider na sa function natin dito, is it the first or the second one? Yes, the second one. Ano? Kasi sabi dito sa pangalawa, yung sub, pangalawang sub function natin, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So dito yun magfo-fall. Ano, yung x approaches 1 from the right sa kanan ng 1. Okay, so x greater than 1. Yan. So gamitin natin 'to to sub function na to. So, we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Solve natin. Kunin natin yung limit of f of x as x approaches 1. So, again, equal lang yun sa f of 1 using theorem 2. So, substitute lang natin yung 1 sa lahat ng x's dito sa function natin. So, we will have f of 1 is equal to 5. Hence, limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right is equal to 5. Thus, since equal... Diba? Yung one-sided limits natin. Hence, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is equal to 5. Okay? Third condition, let's check if f of, if f of c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, obviously, class, equal yung dalawa. I know. So, f of 1 is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. Therefore, f is continuous at x equals 1. So, kung i-examine natin, class, yung sketch ng graph na itong piecewise function natin. So, ito yan. At x equals 1, so it's in here, makikita natin na wala ring hole, walang jump, or walang gap. Therefore, indeed, yung function natin ay continuous at x equals 1. Okay? 
Okay, so let's now proceed naman, class. Tingnan naman natin yung differentiability nitong function natin at x equals 1. So again, we'll be using this. Uh, f prime of x sub 0 is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of x sub 0 all over x minus x sub 0 as x approaches x sub 0. So, i-check ulit natin, class, yung one-sided derivative. So, f prime of 1 from the left. So, from the left muna. It's equal to the limit of 5x minus 5 times 1 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. isa isa natin. Okay? Yung f of x natin, class, dito, uh, dun, ay equal sa 5x. Kasi nga, ang kinukuha natin dito, yung limit ng function as x approaches 1 from the left. So, again, ito ay magpo-fall dito sa unang sub-function. Kasi, ang condition nito, if x is less than 1. So, ito yung gagamitin natin na sub-function. So, f of x is equal to 5x minus f of x sub 0. So, again, ang x sub 0 natin dito ay 1. So, substitute lang natin c1 sa x. So, we will have 5 times 1. All over x kinopya lang minus, again, yung x sub 0 natin is 1. As x approaches 1 from the left. Simplify natin further. So, we will have uh, 5 times 1 is 5. So, magkakaroon tayo dito ng 5x minus 5. Ayan. So, simplify pa natin. We can actually factor out 5 sa numerator. Ano? So, upon doing so, uh, magkakaroon tayo dito ng limit of 5 times the quantity of x minus 1 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. So, again, finactor out lang natin yung 5, yung common factor nitong dalawa, dito sa numerator. Pag minultiply mo naman tong 5 or dinistribute mo yung 5 dito sa loob ng parentheses, pareho lang yan. Okay? Finactor out lang natin yung 5. Yeah, so, as we can see, pwede natin i-cancel out yung x minus 1. So, ang matitira na lang is the limit of 5 as x approaches 1 from the left, which is equal to 5, di ba? Again, the limit of the constant as x approaches c is equal to the constant itself. So, since 5 na lang yan, ang limit of 5 as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 5. Hence, f prime of 1 from the left is equal to 5. Next tayo, class. So, i-check naman natin, class, yung f prime of 1 from the right. From the right naman. Ayan, so isa-isahin natin. So, yung f of x natin dito ay equal lang sa 2x plus 3. Kasi nga, ang kinukuha natin yung limit ng function as x approaches 1 from the right. So, magpo-fall yan dito sa if x is greater than or equal to 1. Kasi nga, galing sa kanan ng number line, edi eh mga uh, mas matataas yon sa 1. Okay? So, dito siya magpo-fall. So, ito yung gagamitin natin na sub-function. So, f of x, pinalta na natin ng 2x plus 3 minus, um, again, yung x sub 0 natin is still 1. So, ito, um, yung x natin dito, gagawin lang natin yung na 1. It, it, isasubstitute lang natin yung 1 sa lahat ng x's dito sa sub-function na to. So, we will have minus quantity of 2 times 1 plus 3. All over, kinopya lang yung x, minus again, yung x sub 0 natin, 1. Ayan. So, limit na to as x approaches 1 from the right. So, simplify natin further. Ayan. So, ang... 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So, magkakaroon tayo dito ng 2x plus 3 minus 5 all over x minus 2. So, limit na to as x approaches 1 from the right. So, 3 minus 5 ay, uh, yeah, negative 2. So, we have limit of 2x minus 2 as all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. Again, we can factor out 2 sa numerator. Ayan. So, magkakaroon tayo ng limit of 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. So, we can cancel out x minus 1. So, matitira na lang ay limit of 2 as x approaches 1 from the right, which is equal to 2. So, ayan na yung f prime of 1 from the right. 2. Ayan. So, again, dito makikita natin na hindi nag-equal yung one-sided derivative. Since the one-sided derivatives f prime of 1 from the left and f prime of 1 from the right are not equal, hence f prime of 1 does not exist. 
That is, f is not differentiable at x equals 1. Okay? And so, to summarize, ayan, to summarize the relationship between continuity and differentiability, we have the following. Again, if a function is differentiable at x equals c, then it is continuous at x equals c. So, differentiability implies continuity. Second, it is possible for a function to be continuous at x equals c and not be differentiable at x equals c. So, continuity does not imply differentiability. Kagaya nung examples, uh, example natin doon sa numbers 2 and 3. Okay? So, with that, here's the list of references that we used in creating this uh, presentation. So, I hope you learned something today. So, it's the end and thank you all for watching. Bye!